today's video we're going to show you three main ways to not only become a better renderer but do it faster and more efficiently we're going to cover three main points materials tools and methods Okay, let's get started. So the first point and the biggest thing to be efficient is I made sure that everything is mixed before I apply any render. I've got a big bath load here on this level and I've also mixed the top level ready to go in another little tub. So everything is mixed where I need it, when I need it. Um, and basically the products I'm using here is called Weber OCR and I'm not joking, it's the best thing that's happened to me since sliced bread. <laughs> it's an amazing product and in terms of rendering, it's just blown sand cement out of the water and it's just made me wonder why I've used sand cement for so long. Here it is, this is Weber One Coat OCR and it's basically just a two coat system unless it's sprayed on. If it's sprayed on then you spray it all in one thickness, we'll talk about that in a minute. But basically it's just a super sick, sticky product, it'll stick to any background and you've just got, in my opinion, a lot more, a lot more assurance with this that it's going to give and it's not going to fail on you basically. I've had it so many West times where sand cement's kind of cracked or, or it's just generally had problems. So what you do is you apply both coats in one day. We'll talk about it in a minute but you apply the first layer and you scratch it up. Now this too, isn't too far from sand cement but the magic happens later on so we'll go into detail in a bit on that and this is what's going to change the whole process of rendering. So you apply it the exact same. Now I've used um, a primer and I'll be honest, I'm using this primer on most jobs now. It's exterior pre-grip. It's brilliant, easy to apply. You've seen it at the beginning of this video. And it just makes the whole process a bit nice to deal with. And again, you've got that assurance that you haven't just got water, the background's safe, it's prepped, and you've got the grip needed for the render to stick to. So again, you apply your first layer and you scratch it, ready to go for the next section where we'll talk about how this product and the process will completely change the rendering game. Okay, so we've got the scratch coat on. As you can see. Now with this product, OCR, you want to apply the second coat immediately. So I'm going to mix up a new batch and get it on rapid. It's the best way. So we're on the second coat, now I want to point something out, you've literally just applied the first coat and we're going directly onto it, scratched it, but it is brilliant for this, it just holds its own weight. Now let's think about this for a second, we're literally applying both coats in one day, how much more efficient is your life going to be if you can get a wall completed in one day without worrying about prepping each coat in between? The other thing is, it doesn't sag, it doesn't move around like common sand cement does. Like I've had issues now where it's just sagging, it's not holding its weight properly. And that's sometimes because we've added too much water to the scratch or we've not had the correct preparation for the scratch coat to go onto. With this product, we literally just do the first coat, scratch it, apply your second coat, first day, no worries, no issues. And look how it rules, it rules like it's a latex render like it's a hard wall plaster almost. It just rules so nice without any sagging or issues that common sand cement can deal with sometimes. So we're talking about a product that's not only versatile but it's extremely, extremely efficient. Now let's move on to the tool side. You would have seen me use this but I'm not joking this just really speeds up your rendering results. If you're comparing this to hand floating um, it's just so much faster. Look, it's just blitzing through it. Now, bear in mind this was an extremely hot day. Considering it was October, the sun was on that wall all day long. And I'm not joking, I was worried it was going to dry out. But again, with this rendering system with the Weber OCR, you just weigh it up. I've literally sprayed the wall a little bit, it comes back to life, no problem. And look, look at the speed that we've got rendering wise here. Look how much faster it is to go through. But watch this other great feature that PowerFlow can do in this little clip now. This is an example of the render being still a bit wet when you're floating, so 
it is filling in, but it's also there's quite a lot of movement. I can feel on the float that if I'm too if I'm too tough, I am gonna pull the render off. So as you can see, see that section? That's where I've dug in. And what's happened, it's because it's still wet, instead of pulling the high spots off, it's just interrupting it. So you've got to be really careful, really slow. Two options here. We wait for it to dry, we just wait a little bit. I'm gonna show you my secret weapon and how to get over it. So this is the Rafina Power Flow. It's electric powered, you've just got one button, but this is perfect for when your render is on the cusp of being a bit too wet. I'll show you. Not only is the power float faster and more efficient, but it allows you to get on the render when it's on a wetter side. Because the float's got a bigger surface area, it can travel on a wetter surface, which means you're getting it done faster, not waiting around for the render to dry up, giving you better results overall. It's just a more efficient system than hand floating. Now what I've started doing is floating everything at once. So floating everything together, filling in the areas it needs filling, floating it all as one. And then what happens once it's all floated, then I'll start doing the sponging. Because this Weber OCR product, it really works well with water. So if it's got to a point where it's dried out or it's just not as spongible, just flick a bit of water, sponge it up and it works itself in like a dream. Now what you're doing is if you're floating together everything all as one and then sponging afterwards as one, you're just being a bit more efficient with your time. Now look, this was dry, this was in the sun all day, I just splattered a bit of water on top whilst it was being floated and it really does come back to life and it just makes the job so much easier if you're floating together and then sponging together. It's just acting more efficient and again I just don't think you get away with this as sand cement where we've, this product it really works well. I'm glad I got that top section done, it's been in the sun all day and it's been dry but thankfully I've managed to uh, float and sponge it. <laughs> I've blended it into itself so it's this bottom half should be fair, should be easy enough now, it's been in the shade, should be good. Now the final thing is, one thing we're working here, we've got a drip bead over the lead work and that means it's all in keeping, everything's weathered, everything's watertight but the thing I'm going to say is get rid of your poly floats, get on this, this is a Rafina diamond back float and I'm not joking, it's just an amazing bit of kit. The poly floats, they degrade, they wear down really fast, I've had this for a good year and a half now and I've not seen any signs of wear and it just works a dream. It is really nice to work with. It's a lovely float and I must admit that in terms of tools, the floats are a game changer from Rafina. I'm not endorsed by them, I'm not sponsored, but they just really make a big difference. So it's the floats that are a game changer for me. And um, obviously working the drip beads over lead work, creating these little details is what makes your job stand out from the rest. And it's not hard to do, it's just paying a bit more attention to detail. But this sponge, has also been a bit of a game changer. It holds water well and um, with the Weber products I'm finding that it's good to have a bit of water in the sponge but be a bit more aggressive when you're sponging it and it just leaves that lovely textured look that you get from typical sand cement, sand cement work and it's the exact same finish basically but it really is the sponge and the floats just make a massive difference in helping create more ease but a better finish overall so that's what I recommend entirely. And this is the finished product, that's what we're looking at. This is the bottom, we're working all the way to the top. Did it in one day, easy peasy. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. But more importantly, if you want to see what happens if you can't get a wall dead flat, watch this video because this wall will never be flat and there's nothing I could do about it. But if you watch that, then you'll realise that sometimes you can't get every job right. Click that there. And uh, yeah, see you in the next one.